So you need to replace your sump pump and you're looking for a little guidance. Well, you're in the right spot because that's exactly what this video is for. We're gonna show you exactly how to replace your sump pump and how to do it in a way that makes sure it lives as long as possible. Here we have our new sump pump. This particular sump pump is a Ferguson brand sump pump. It's a ProFlow sump pump. As you are replacing the sump pump in your home, much like we've done here, you're gonna cut the discharge pipe and you're, you're pretty much gonna replace like the bottom five to six feet of discharge pipe. And it's totally fine, PVC pipe is really cheap. It's just a lot easier to just plan on replacing it than to try to hook the new one up to the old one and everything else. We've got the discharge pipe completely cut out of the way. We've got our new pump here. And then we have an inch and a half MIP adapter. MIP stands for male iron pipe. So we have male iron pipe by PVC here. So we're gonna screw this adapter down into the top of the pump. We don't need thread sealant or anything like that. And you're gonna learn why here in a minute because this does not have to be 100% watertight. We're not gonna muscle it in there. We're just gonna screw it in pretty good hand tight. It doesn't, we don't even need a wrench. We don't need a pair of pliers or anything like that. Just good and snug. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a smaller piece of pipe that is long enough to get our check valve assembly above the pump, but is short enough that keeps our check valve assembly inside the pit. And if you're wondering what a check valve assembly is, this is it here. So inside this check valve assembly, there is a one-way valve. It's a little flapper, and it lets water flow up through the valve but then when the pump shuts off, the valve closes, all the water above the valve stays above the valve. Without this assembly in place, what would happen is every time your pump shut off, all the water in the discharge line would flow back into the pit and the pump would have to repump all of that water. The check valve helps ensure that when the pump runs, it's only having to pump the water once. Okay, so the most important step when you're installing your own sump pump is you want to drill a weep hole in the discharge pipe between the male iron pipe adapter and the check valve. We're gonna cut away here and I'm gonna show you guys exactly why the weep hole needs to be there and exactly how important it is. All right, so we're back at the whiteboard here and I'm gonna show you the purpose of the weep hole that we were drilling in that sump pump install. So if I were to take this cereal bowl and turn it upside down and then push it down into a basin of water very slowly, what would happen is the air that is currently in the cereal bowl has nowhere to escape. The bowl would stay dry because of the air pocket up in there. And no matter how deep I pushed it into the basin, there's always going to be air in the bowl. This bowl is similar to the shape of the inside of a sump pump. Inside a sump pump, we have a bowl shaped reservoir in the, the impeller system of the sump pump. And this is where a very interesting looking fan blade sits down inside this bowl. As water gets up in underneath the sump pump, that fan blade propels that water up and out the sump pump. If this basin were to go dry and then we started getting rain again, the discharge pipe always has water in it because of the check valve on the discharge pipe. We get water slowly filling the basin. And it's a very similar action to us pushing a bowl down into water. It would be no different than us holding a bowl of water in a basin and then slowly filling the basin. The air that's below the rim of the bowl or above the rim of the bowl would stay in the bowl. That's where the weep hole comes in. The reason why is because this impeller is really good at moving water. It is very bad at moving air. It's not like a fan blade. It's a very interesting fan blade, if anything. It can't move air very well. I like to use a 530 seconds drill bit. Um, it's not a bad idea to refer to the owner's manual of your sump pump because sometimes they will have a very specific size that they want to use. When we drill that weep hole, we typically drill it at a downward angle. So that way when the pump comes on, water is going to spray out of that weep hole a little bit. 
And so we want that water to spray at a downward angle. This particular pump, the directions actually say that you don't need one. And the reason why you don't need one is because in the cast iron base of the pump, there is actually a factory drilled weep hole in the base. Here's why I like to still drill one in the discharge pipe is because this is cast iron and this pump spends its entire life sitting underwater in your sump pit. What happens to cast iron when it goes underwater? It rusts. We take it so far in our company that even if the instructions say you don't need one, we still drill one because there's nothing wrong with having two, but the one in the plastic will for sure not rust closed in 5, 10, 15, 20 years over the whole life of that pump. That's why you need to drill a weep hole in your discharge line and it's the most important step of any sump pump installation. This is a 5 16th torque wrench that we're using. If you don't have a torque wrench, it's no big deal. You can use a flathead screwdriver or a 5 16th socket. These just need to be really snug. This torque wrench is actually designed to break over at 60 inch pounds and I'm not even getting them that tight. They just need to be really, really snug. One of the things that I want you to make note of is we actually have our pump sitting off to the side a little bit so that our float assembly is directly in the center of the pit. One of the problems that we can encounter is if we set the pump near the edge of the pit, the float assembly can actually get stuck against the side of the pit and that can prevent the float from lifting or lowering. If we prevent the float from lifting, the pump will never turn on. If we prevent the float from lowering, then the pump will never shut off and it'll burn itself up. I'm gonna feed our wires through our lid. And then I'm gonna work our lid down over this really long discharge pipe. We're gonna trim this up here in a second. Now we're all piped in. There's one last thing that we need to do. We need to put another two hole clamp on the bottom of this discharge line, because right now as the pump would come on, this would rattle and shake and kind of bounce and thud everywhere. So we'll put one more two hole strap down here and then we'll plug the pump in and we're good to go. For our screws here, we're using one and three quarter inch, quarter inch Tapcon screws. Electricians, if you're wondering what I'm doing, you've probably never seen this motion before. This is called a broom and we're actually sweeping up after ourselves. So um, if you're an electrician watching this video and you wanna learn something new, go get a broom and clean up after yourself. Yeah. 